Hey guys, welcome to the Dragon Stories Podcast. I am your host, Julie Reese Steens, and thank you so much for tuning in to the podcast once again on YouTube. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the channel, and there'll be more content. Make sure you ring that bell so you can get more content in the future and more content it shall have because in the future when COVID is settled down and we get to go out and do whatever we want, there'll be more to come. I promise you that. And without further ado, let's get into another guest. I mean, I'm so lucky for just out of all the episodes I've done, I've had 40 episodes done so far. And every single one of them, apart from my good friend Luke, who's been one of my co-hosts and good friends, you know, who's helped me out. I've always get a lot of people to come on the show, talk about their careers, talk about football, really, because that's what it's all about. It's football and football's life for some people. And it's fun to talk about it. Another Wrexham legend we got on the show, you know, and uh, and a lot of people go, what is it with you and Wrexham? I'm going, I don't know. I don't care. It's, it's Wrexham. <laughs> so it's, uh, without further ado, it's uh, Wrexham legend, former Carnarvon, Kevin Druid's player. It's Wayne Phillips. Wayne, how's it going there, buddy? Good afternoon. Uh, yes, I'm well, thanks. And uh, thanks for having me on. Um, looking forward to it. It's always nice to, to be able to chat um, about the, the past and, you know, the career I had and, uh, you know, it, it, it's always um, a, a nice time for me to be able to look at look look at good memories I had with the football club. I know it's such a nostalgia as well. I mean, I and it's 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 good for me because you know for for, uh, for someone of uh, well, I'm 24 years old and I, I get to speak to you know the players of uh, the the past you know who've who've gone to have such tremendous careers for like yourself. I mean, playing for Wrexham, you know, starting off in the late 80s and then you you had this successful decade in the 90s where you won the Welsh Cup you know you competed in Europe and Arsenal I mean we'll be talking about that loads and and it, it's amazing you know to, just to go back and just uh, talk about it because you know the nostalgia is never a never a bad thing it's always a good thing because you can look back and just be proud of it and for, for you you know you, you start off on the uh, YTS apprentice is that right you know it's yeah you, you mentioned the 80s uh, it makes me feel ancient uh, <laughs> you know it's time flies by and uh you know some of the some of the memories feel as if they were yesterday but uh you know you, you get reminded it was a long time ago um you know i started yes as you said back in the late 90s um on the yts scheme um i came a little bit older than, than, than the first year yts i came as a second year yts so in theory i only had 12 months uh, 12 months to impress uh, as a youngster whereas the, the the three or four the lads who were on the scheme had two years and um, I must admit from the first day um, of arriving to the last day of leaving uh, Wrexham Football Club I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed every minute of it and um, you know it's it's, it's a schoolboy's uh, dream uh, to be that professional footballer uh, growing up in a small town in North Wales uh, proud to be Welsh Carnarvon and to have the chance to play for what I would call my local club even though it was 75 miles down the road um, you know, I, I was very fortunate to, to have had that opportunity and then the rest is history. And, uh, you know, it was a long career. Um, and as I say, very proud of, of, of the people I worked with, the people who gave me the chance. And I'm thankful to a lot of people. You know, with I was saying that, you know, when you started off in 1989, you know, I, I've always said this. I, I've always said I was born in 1996. So I've, I've always said to a lot of people that I've missed I was born too late, you know, I, I should have been born, you know, in the 60s or 70s because football back then, I think it was a bit more lively and like uh, today, you know, I can always, t- I, I can literally talk about today's football, modern football, and it, it's just changed a lot whether people look at it for the good or bad reasons, you know, I think, you know, if you look back on the 70s, 80s and 90s, heck, even the early 2000s, you know, it, it, it was sort of, you know, the glory, glory of the British football, let alone just individual Welsh, English, Scottish football and that. Um, and I've always said, you know, oh, I, I would have loved to be in that stand of bouncing, you know, and oh, it would have been a, a, amazing. And especially for Wrexham fans, you know, I, I've uh, I got a few Wrexham supporters who follow me on Twitter, on my original account and my Dragon's Voice account. And they've always said, you know, oh, do you know, the, the Wrexham back in the day, you know, when the, uh, well, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, I mean, the they are, you know, considered the top team in Wales, you know, and the oldest team in Wales, if, if uh, Kevin Druids and Newtown have a say in that matter. But for you, you know, when you started, it seemed to be that it just took off because, you know, you had uh, 
uh, under Brian Flynn, you know, these matches against Arsenal and Man United and, you know, winning the Welsh Cup and being in European competition, you know, it, was it a big, was it a big um, moment for you where a realisation went, whoa, you know, because you just sort of went in there into the first team and just experienced all these matches. I mean, how did you feel when everything came out your way in the squad? Yeah, it was. It was a big moment. Um, as I said, for, for a youngster growing up, um, only ever wanting to be a professional footballer. Um, I look back today and think maybe I should have done better in school, but um, I did the talk on my feet and uh, not my brain. And, um, you know, I lived that dream uh, by having that opportunity to come to Wrexham. Um, I think it was 87, 88 I first came here. Uh, Dixie McNeil was the, the, the first team manager and, and he gave me my first opportunity uh, to, to sign professional contract with Wrexham, but I'd done a bit of homework before I arrived. Um, I knew a bit about Wrexham Football Club. I knew about a stadium. Um, I knew Wales had played here on many occasions, uh, even had the privilege of coming here, 84, to, to watch Wales. And um, no, knowing that the team of the 70s was a successful side, the 70s and 80s, the John Neal era, era, so I, I did a bit of a research and I knew what I was coming to. And um, I was hoping to, to be a part of that for the next 10, 20 years. And um, that's how it was, how it was proven to be. Um, I speak to a lot of people. Um, you know, I've never moved away from the town. I still live in the town. I class this as home now, uh, even though you know, my, my, my real home is Carnarvon. Uh, lived here for most of my life. Uh, you see youngsters about the place who've never ever seen Wrexham in the football league. Um, that's how the tide has turned. You know, a lot of Wrexham fans have only ever known them in the, in the national league for 12 or 13 years. And they do have a good following. It's a fantastic um, fan base that Wrexham have. You have to speak to the elder generation, the, the, the people in the thirties and forties and fifties and sixties. And they'll keep reminding you how, of how good the times were. Um, and I, for one, hope that those times come back. Um, I'm as big a fan. Um, yes, I'm an ex-player. Um, I, you know, I played a number of games for the club. But most, most of all, I'm a fan as well. Um, you know, I, I support Wrexham Football Club uh, as well as Man United. I have to get that in with United doing so well at the moment. Uh, but no, I, I, I would like to see uh, Wrexham uh, being successful again and being back in the football league and competing in in, in, in playoffs and championships and uh, and I think I'm still even though I've just turned fifty I still think I'm still young enough to think that that can happen again uh, especially with what's going on um, you know the last month or two and what's go, going to be coming to the football club I believe that success will come back. Did you, um, when Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney, when they announced, I mean, it was absolutely out of the room. I always ask former Wrexham players this sort of question again. I bet for you, you know, because you're one of the Wrexham legends that, you know, like I say, you're a fan as well and you care about Wrexham and everything. When I first heard that uh, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney were going to co own the club. With the, obviously, with minor shareholders, you know, with the supporters trust and other people probably investing their time and, and money into the club. But when you first heard about it, was how how did you feel when at first when the announcement was made, and how did you feel then when uh, there was a, like a sort of meeting between the two and how they approached, you know, their plan in investing into Wrexham. Yeah, my initial thought was, um, for, for those who don't know me now, I do have a day job or, or night job, as I call it, because I do work nights uh, for, for, the, for the NHS. And um, I'd woke up after a night shift and uh, you sometimes think, have you just dreamt what you've read? Uh, or is it April the 1st? Um, that was my initial thought. And then, you know, you, you, you saw Twitter going mad and social media going mad. And my, my, my initial feeling was, wow, you know, um, this could be a special time for Wrexham Football Club. Um, I must admit, I didn't know too much about the, the two guys, uh, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney, but I know enough about them now to suggest that they, 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 they seem to be decent guys uh, coming along for the right reason. And, um, you know, I, only th I think that this could be um, the making of Wrexham Football Club again. The, the start is something special. Um, that's what we we're all hoping because, you know, it's all good and well saying we deserve to be higher. We deserve to be in a better league. 
you know, we're not a national league, league club, but we are at the moment because that's where um, that's where the team are uh, at this current time. So, but I think it can only be good for the football club, for the town, for the whole of North Wales, for Welsh football. I think everybody in Wales, um, and I say this for Cardiff and Swansea fans as well, I'm sure they would wish Wrexham to do well, even though there's a bit of rivalry between us. Um, you know, when we when we came up against each other in the, in the 90s, you know, the hate from 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 wanting to win, I think. Yeah. I think you ask any genuine, real Welsh football fan, I'm sure they would like and wish success in Wrexham Football Club as well as Cardiff, Swansea, not forgetting Newport County as well. Yeah, yeah, of course, because, I mean, I support Barry Town and it's like, uh, I mean, the closest rivalries are Merthyr and and... Uh, but another rivalry that we always seem to look at is Carnarvon, and I know you play for Carnarvon, and you're a Carnarvon boy. Um, and the thing is about Carnarvon, we we don't we love their fan base, uh, believe it or not. But when we get down there, it it is like a proper rivalry, and because of the similarities and the standards of football that both Carnarvon and Barry share. And um, we were we were I I didn't know what the part I we thought there was going to be a genuine financial problem with Carnarvon recently, but I think because of COVID. Uh, especially but we were worried about Carnarvon and we were we were worried for them because we were going to miss you know the, the long journey up there and uh, but to, to actually have a proper football atmosphere because they bring the fans in and it brings that vibe to it so it, it, it is you know that sense of we want them to do well because we want to try and you know yeah. beat them and compete them every now and then so I can I understand where you're coming from there because the one thing I really didn't understand was it's because it's it's Hollywood and Hollywood's coming to Wrexham and they're bringing you know they're, they're because uh, I, I I don't know about you but it's like to me you know because Rob Ryan, uh, Ryan Reynolds is Canadian and, and Rob McAuley is American you know in America you know they don't know much unless you're from Pennsylvania or in that region you know uh, a lot of uh, Americans don't know where a lot of people think Wales is in England you know and uh, Wales yeah. is Wales is a no nothing country, so it is putting Wales on the map there in in a in a live uh, how can I put it in a open audience to uh, the US and and Canada and you know uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing Wrexham you know because they're doing well at the moment in the in the conference you know and hopefully you know they will get back into the football league but for you you know because you played in the football league and you played in the Welsh Cups you played in like I said Europe and everything. So at the beginning of the of of, your, of the start of your career, how did you fit into the squad? Especially because you had the likes of Joey Jones, Mickey Thomas, you know, um, Gordon Davis, there was Steve Watt, you know, some of these you know big players that have gone to bigger clubs like uh, uh, Man United and Liverpool and winning the European Cup and FA Cup and everything. So what was I like for you just to, to come in and you know be part of that squad? Well, it was fantastic, really, because, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm always grateful to Dixie McNeil, as I said, for, for giving me that first chance. But I didn't really spend that much time with Dixie because Dixie soon left uh, his role as manager. So majority of my career was spent under Brian Flynn. And um, I couldn't speak highly enough of the guy, um, a guy who, who, who did a fantastic job for Wrexham Football Club, um, knew how to get success. And I think part of that was bringing the youngsters through, um, given the opportunities that I don't see happening now to 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 too many youngsters who who are coming through the academies at, at football clubs. So I count myself a little bit fortunate that we came through at the right time. Uh, the club had a, had a, a very small squad. Uh, it relied on the the youth players to to be um, a success. Um, I came through with a good crop of players. Uh, you mentioned him, uh, Steve Walking, a, a good mate of mine. Gareth Owen, another good pal of mine. Um, and, and what we had then, we had the experienced players alongside us. You mentioned him, Joey Jones. You know, me coming from Carnarvon to being the same side, in the same changing rooms, on the same training ground as the likes of Joey Jones and Brian Flynn, Mickey Thomas. You know, you're thinking, well, this is this is special. And I think Brian had a, and, and Joey and Kevin Reeves had a knack of knowing how to introduce young players to the to the squad. And um, as I say, it was never ever going to work with a group of young players. You had you had to have that blend, and um, it was a fantastic mixture that he had. You know, of youth, 
um, experience and, and, and the aging players. And uh, that worked well for the whole time I was here. And that seemed to be the way uh, the conveyor belt went on. You know, you can name hundreds of players that came through that youth, youth system. Some of them went on to, to bigger and better things. Brian Hughes, you know, a million pound player, a talented footballer. Um, the, the Dave Brammers, the Jonathan Crosses. And, and this is how it worked for, for those number of years I was here. And, um, and it worked uh, because it did bring success. And as I say, to, 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 you know, I had a good manager who, who knew, his, knew his stuff as well. Um, and that, that was beneficial as well. So um, fortunate, really, that, 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 was, that was the way the clubs used to go uh, during the 90s. You know, relied heavily on bringing the youth through. The successful ones who, who, were, who were a little bit more special would probably go on and be sold to make some money for the football club. Yeah. Um, and the others, like myself and Gaz, and I'm not saying you know, that we weren't good enough to maybe have that bit of, a little bit of luck to move on, um, but we, we, they were relying on us to be in that first team as well. Yeah, and it, uh, absolutely, you know, if, if, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, if there's no such thing as, you know, being good, you know, and going on to the bigger clubs, you know, you're, you're, at least you mean something to the club like Wrexham, you know, you're worth value to Wrexham. Like, it, it could be like any, you know, one club man, you know, it's like, um, you, you can name a few. And funny enough, I was speaking to Stuart Fleetwood in the last episode and we were talking, we were talking about um, the importance of youth and how they should be being mixed in with the uh, with the experience they got. And it, it's, it's the problem with modern football, really, where um, these, it's like Stuart Fleetwood uh, said, and I think a few former footballers have said, and I just can't really think of the top of my head who said that, but it's, um, it, it seems to me that these young prospects are um, multi-millionaires before they even reach the age of 21 or 22, before they even kick the ball at, I don't know, at Stamford Bridge or Old Trafford in first team uh, uh, professionally. And it, it seems to me that that's what's missing is the importance of youth and how they should, you know, like with the YTS scheme or, you know, trying to get them out there on loans or in clubs like Wrexham, whether they be in the Football League or not, you know, it's important for them to, to understand that level of competitiveness and the maturity and the experience they should get. And it's like with um, Ethan Ampadu. Uh, Ethan, you know, Ampadu, you know, he's, he's, he's a Chelsea player, but he's proven to himself, proven to be worth that key player at Sheffield United, despite, you know, regardless of their uh, results, you know, but he's he's making a name for himself and he made a name for himself at Exeter. And I mean, and a lot of people, even though what, he's 19 or 20, you know, he's a lot of whale fans are saying that's a future captain right there. And, and you know, that's that's the thing, you know, I always tend to, do you tend we, to? We, we were thrown in uh, at 18 or 19, uh, you know, I don't know if you're aware, Wrexham had a, uh, a sort of reserve third team in the Welsh National League. And we, we, we were taught our trade in our league with, with a, a guy called Brian Prandtl and, and Idris Price. Um, we used to go to places like Penacai, Buckley, uh, Gressford, um, you know, pitches that you were up to your knees in, in mud. Um, a man's league, uh, a youth team player playing in a man's league. And I think that brought us on massively mm. uh, because when you got to the first team, when you had a sniff of the first team, you were ready for it. And, and there was even times when First team players had lost a bit of form. Um, they, they, they were coming back from injury. Even them, uh, at that time, you know, they were going to the likes of Penakai uh, to, to play games, to get match fitness. And, and you wouldn't see that happening these, these days. Like, you know, um, I think to, to school, academy football is, 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 is academy football. Um, and then when some of the kids are given opportunities, they, they're not quite ready for that man's football because... They've been playing against youth players of their own age. They've never sampled growing, growing against uh, playing against men. So, I think it was it was a fantastic way to learn our trade. And uh, I can say that the number of players that did come through at that time, all having done the same, you know, uh, there, there wouldn't be one player who came through the youth system at Wrexham in the, in the early nineties that wouldn't have played in that Welsh National League. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with you, and with, with you as well. You mean in nineteen ninety, you know starting out, I mean, the European Cup Winners Cup tournament in 1990-91, you know, you you and along with the squads, I, I do believe, uh, I think you were 
then and correct me if I'm wrong anyway, Wayne, because you know I <laughs> if I say something wrong, then I want to get it right in the end. But uh, European Cup Women's Cup, you reached, you know, you played in two rounds. So in the first round, you were playing against uh, Danish side uh, Lingby, and then in the second round, it was Manchester United. But in the first round uh, against Lingby, what was that like for you to be competing in European competition, especially against a team that's not really against an English side or a Welsh side? That, that was a fantastic trip, and it'll live long in my memory um, because we, we, we drew at home on the, at the race course. And, um, you know, going away to Denmark, probably as, as big underdogs, really, against, against uh, Lingby, a team. Uh, you know, we hear about in, in, in Europe and uh, competition these days, like, you know, and um, a nice uh, way to win because we'd worked on the set piece. I'll never forget the free kick that, that, that was taken and, uh, you know, Gareth Owen clipping it in, headed back across and Chris Armstrong popping in with the winner. And, um, you know, um, uh, you know, a fantastic win and, um, you know, a brilliant night out in, in Denmark after, like, you know, a, a squad celebrating a European win in, in, in Denmark it was a fantastic time. Uh, and then you just wait and um, I'm, I'm sure... Some of the lads would have been disappointed with the with the draw for the next round uh, being drawn, because you don't get chance to go abroad too often uh, in European competitions. And then we were drawn against a team up the road. Yeah. But for myself, for myself, it was fantastic. You know, Manchester United, Old Trafford. What, what, what more do you want? Yeah. As a youngster, I think fifty odd thousand people. Um, the, the preparation. You know, we we had to travel. The the the, the law states that you have to be in the country of the game twenty four hours before. So we ended up going up to Manchester the night before, staying in a hotel, training, training in Old Trafford the night before. And you're just thinking, this is where you want to be. This is where you want to be as a footballer. And um, it was a fantastic occasion. You know, and like I say, those you, you remember quite a few games, you know, when, we, when you get to the end of your career. Um, but that's certainly one of them up there on my list that I'll never forget. Did, uh, when you uh, went out celebrating with um, with your, the players and everything, you know your teammates in in Denmark, you know, um, were I bet you met a few of the traveling Wrexham fans who came in to celebrate you, with you. Do you think it's Do you think it's very important? Um, I, I know it, it was very important. I mean, I've seen some of the um, the documentaries now, especially you know '89 with Arsenal winning the division, and there, there was a, there was a bit um, where Arsenal players came back and they went no we ain't going home we're going out with the, the fans you know and you see them playing pool together did you think it would uh, you know that's what's missing in football now I bet because you were celebrating with the Rex I suppose who traveled there traveled there do you think that's missing in today's football I think it's difficult in today's in today's climate because um the way we've gone with with social media and everything you know you you have to be so careful um and they are professional they are professional at the end of the day you know the day's we used to go out. There was no mobile phones. Uh, there was no camera phones. So I'm not saying that we went out to cause problems, you know, but you you, you, you knew you were safe. Um, and, and I do realise how difficult it is for players. Uh, but, but I think Wrexham fans have always been special. Um, you know, people may say I'm biased because I've played for the club in saying that. But um, you know, I had a good rapport with, 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 I would say, majority, if not all of the fans. And... Uh, you know, I always, you know, still enjoy discussing football with them, um, whether it's out walking the dog uh, these days or just, just, you know, just in the supermarket. You know, um, I still enjoy speaking to them, and it's something I would never do: uh, is, is walk away or turn them down. But so yes, uh, I've had many special nights out with, with Wrexham fans after victories, and uh, you know, the Denmark one was certainly one of them because, as as always, they travel in numbers you know, spend a lot of hard-earned money to follow their football club. And uh, they would have enjoyed that night as much as we would have done as players. You know, it was collectively a great nice night for us all. And uh, one of the things, you know, uh, about, you know, your your days of following with the the, uh, the club and everything and being a fan is um, we can always talk much about the, you know, the good old days, especially, you know, I, I think I should mention this, uh, now, before we can move on to other things, of course, I'm going to mention the FA Cup game against Arsenal. You know, I've already mentioned that, you know, d- d- them and, you know, the, the division, first division winning squad. And most of them were still playing, you know, for the, for the squad against you guys. When, you know, when the FA Cup match was held at the race course, and of course, you know, um, it, it was a big, 
big opportunity for you guys to be playing against a really big side, uh, let alone Manchester United, you know. Mm. Well, what was the approach from the squad to, to go in and what was the, uh, how can I say, what was the plan really? Uh, and of, of course it's going to be win. <laughs> what, was really, what was really the plan for you to go in there uh, against Arsenal and what was, what was Flynn's and your guys' approach to it? Well, I remember the build-up to that game. You know, you, in those days, the names came out of the hat, and at lunchtime, and you, you were you were so excited because, as you mentioned, league champions, uh, League One winners against a team who had finished bottom of the league, the ninety-second place, and um, you know the build-up begins a week or two before, and you you, you just fingers crossed that uh, you do enough to be in that starting eleven. Um, obviously, obviously, you feel for the ones who haven't made it into the squad or into the eleven. But, you know, uh, preparations were as normal, other than um, the only thing different we did was we went to uh, a hotel the night before the game, which we never did for home games. And we stayed in Ross at all, um, only down the road. But it was a nice, nice little get together. Um, as always, a nice meal uh, together. Um, you know, you'd have a little chat about the game. And uh, Flinny was always one that on away trips, he was quite happy for us to have uh, a little glass of beer um, or the night before a game, uh, when it was just a half half a lager or, or a little glass of wine, whatever. And I'm sure that's what most of the lads would have done because, you know, being that excited, it was always going to be a difficult night to get to sleep. Um, you know, I always shared room with Steve Walken. Uh, you're talking away into the early hours of the morning. And on the other hand, thinking we need to get to sleep because we've got a tough game tomorrow. And then the build-up, you know, it, it, it seems to go on forever. You know, the, the morning of the game, you're just itching to get going. You know, um, yes, you're nervous. You know, I remember being in the change room. You, you had the likes of Gordon Davis, Mickey and Joey trying to calm. They'd been there, done it, got, it, got a T-shirt, played in the European Cup Finals, FA Cup Finals. So this would have been another game for them. But for the younger lads... You know, we'd have been probably a bit, a bit shaky going out. Um, and you want to get a game started. And, uh, you know, running out to that roar uh, from, from the cop and the rest of the ground, 13,000 people. You know, it's just the hairs on the back of your neck standing up. And um, you just you just, you just, just hope that you can enjoy the day. You know, these are games you don't want to forget and you want to enjoy. You know, have no regrets after. And... Uh, you know, that would have been the team talk. Enjoy it. Go out and enjoy it. And, um, you know, the rest, well, you know, if you look at the game, you know, I've watched the game back many a time, going 1-0 down, it could easily have been 3-4, 5-0 down at half time. We rode our luck at times, but that's what you need to, to win these games. And then, you know, that, that special uh, moment um, when Mickey scored his free kick, uh, a special goal. And then the minds playing games, uh, ticking away then thinking, we've got a replay here back at Highbury. And it's one of them other grounds uh, you, you dream of going to play. Um, and I've always said to this day, uh, you know, Steve laughs and jokes about it as well. You know, Steve went and spoiled that. He scored the winning goal. And, and you know, it's just, it's just amazing, amazing. And, and, and to this day, I think it's probably one of the, greatest shocks in FA Cup history uh, and it will always be because not because it was Arsenal and Wrexham you look at Arsenal's team they had the back five of internationals yeah. Lee Dixon Winterburn uh, David O'Leary uh, Tony Adams David Seaman in goal five four England internationals who played for England at the time and, and, and you're just thinking how did we do it but um, yeah. we did and it seems seems like Last year, you know, I think it's 29 years now, is it? If my maths are right, 29 years gone by since 92. This is a yeah, long time. Yeah. Next year. Oh, I'll be ne oh, my Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's a, it's a long time, like, you know, it's a long time anyway. But uh, they're, they're making a film about it, I heard. Uh, I, I heard that. I don't know if you did. And I could be wrong, but that's, that's what I heard. I heard that they were going to make a film about it. Well, that would be nice, yeah. Now, you know, like I say, it's so, so, such a long time, but it doesn't feel it. I mean, you ask any of the players who played on that day, you know, and I'm sure the fans who, who enjoyed it as well, uh, they'll feel as if it was only last year, like, because it's a, it's a game that gets mentioned this time every year. You get to the third round of the FA Cup and Wrexham Arsenal is always mentioned. 
obviously Mickey, Mickey's goal is it, seen quite often on telly. And let's not forget Steve Watkins scored the winning goal. You know, a, a local lad, um, a hero to the Wrexham fans, Steve. And I, I was so glad for him because he, he's a good mate. He's an absolute genuine lad. And, um, you know, it would have meant a lot to him um, as it would have been playing for Wrexham because being, being a lad for Macrovia, um, just one of those genuine, fantastic guys in football. What, what, why do you think then that it's probably going to be a daft question I, and I should know this, but why do you think many people will, will remember or do remember Mickey Thomas's free kick re- instead of Steve Watkins' winning goal? You know, Because a lot of people would remember the winning goal, but it yeah. seems to me that people will remember Mickey Thomas's. Well, why do you think that fans will remember that? I think just because of the quality of the free kick, really, uh, you know, from, from 20, 25 yards out, out um, Steve might disagree because he'll say any goal is a quality goal. doesn't matter how the ball goes across the line. But I think just more so because, not, not because it was Mickey, I think because, because of the free kick, um, you know, a special goal. Um, Steve was a little bit scrappy in a way, um, ended up getting to the right place over the line. Um, but no, like I say, majority of the, the time, uh, it's Mickey that's mentioned. Um, but but you know, it was it was the winning goal from Steve that that won us the game. Another thing as well, you know, as mentioned in the FA Cup, is you reach the. I'm going to jump ahead a bit. Yeah. And it was in the FA Cup. I think it was the '96 '97. FA Cup tournament where you reached the quarterfinals, you know, and that was the first time you reached the quarterfinals in, in in a few years. And during that course of getting to the quarterfinals, I think it was the third round where uh, you had to do a, a replay against West Ham United uh, and, you know, you beat them at Upton Park. So can you tell us a bit about the your experience in playing against West Ham United in those two matches and especially beating them, you know, to go forth, go for, move forward in yeah. the uh, FA Cup. I missed you know, those games too. I, I played in the, the fourth round against Arsenal um, in the two-two after we beat Arsenal, we drew West Ham. Myself and Lee Jones scored at Upton Park. The ninety-six, ninety-seven run, I, I was out injured, um, so I didn't really play a big part in in that run. But we speak about, you know, we spoke about the highs and the Arsenal and the Man United and the Lingby. Certainly a low was that Chesterfield game, um, the quarter-final of the FA Cup. You know, it was a massive, massive opportunity to get to that semi-final. And, um, you know, it was a game that, that was so tight. And it, and it, and it was a mistake. You know, um, Darren and, and Andy will, will hold their hands up. It was a bit of miscommunication. Uh, but that was one of the low points. I was there at Chesterfield that day. Uh, it'd been a fantastic run to get there. The, the, the games against Birmingham, West Ham, if I'm right. Um, I think Kevin Russell may have scored in one of the games, and uh, you're rewarded with a with a with a game against Chesterfield in the quarter final game. You quite fancy yourselves to win, and um, you know f- that was one of the low points I'm sure for the football club, um, myself included. Even though I wasn't part of the eleven that played in that game, it was such a devastating um, afternoon uh, in that change room after the game. No words could describe how players felt because. They went. They, 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 we missed an opportunity, you know. And you never know. You get to that semi-final. Chesterfield were quite unlucky, if I if I remember right. They they lost to Middlesbrough in that semi-final, and they they, they had a goal, a goal that should have been given was disallowed. Um, so that's how close Chesterfield were to getting to an FA Cup final, um, and that could have been us. Yeah, and and you look at you look at Chesterfield now. I mean, they're in the conference same as Wrexham, and uh, they're just fighting relegation in, in some ways. And you think to yourself, Fleming heck, you know, wh- where's what's gone wrong, you know? And uh, but then again, it's like you look at. I know Wrexham are just sort of climbing back up, and hopefully with the new investments that one day Wrexham will rise again. Um, but you do look back, and I, I mean, I used to look at Wrexham a few couple of years ago when you know in mid table, and you think to yourself. Epic, you know, FA Cup giant killing, you know, the, the European Cup when it's cup, the Welsh Cup and everything. You think, heck, you know, a very successful side, you know, and they're there, you know, and you think, what the hell's happened, you know? And uh, and one of the things, you know, I, I always find this, but it's like, um, I know I keep mentioning uh, Barry a lot in my podcast, but uh, Barry's my team, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
it's like a lot of people say, Flemming Barry, you know, if they understood the, the past, you know, they've had a successful, you know, history. And I know, I think I remember you, you, you guys played against Barry in the FAW Premier Cup. And Ian Rush was, Flemming like you've played alongside some big names, you know. <laughs> and another one you mentioned there, Rush, Rushy, I never actually played alongside him. No? Um, oh, my God. What's going on? Oh, wait a minute. You went to Stockport, didn't you? Damn. I did go to Stockport. I think I went to Stockport. The day Ian Rush was coming to Wrexham, I went to Stockport. So, um, I, I don't know if you know, my, my nickname was Rushy as well. So, we couldn't have two <laughs> Rushies at the football club, could we? So, one of, one of us had to give way. I was the one who had to leave to make way for, for the, the, the legend himself, Ian Rush. And, um, you know, even though he played for Liverpool, he's still a legend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, another. It's just hard to believe. You know that Alan Kennedy was another name who played another European Cup winner who played uh, during my spell. Jimmy Case. You know some some big big names. And um, people you know, don't know that. You know they, that's why you know people just don't. You know when when you mention names like Rushy and Mickey Thomas and Joey Jones and Alan Kennedy and everything, you 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 got to look at yourself thinking. You know. Anything can happen in football, you know. Anything can happen, and anyone can move to anywhere. And it, it's it's like um like like I said with Barry, you know, we've got David Cottrell, you know, on the squad, and I mean, I yeah. was I wasn't expecting that full stop, you know. I'm thinking, oh, he's, you know, because he's been in Euros 2016, he's done you know success with other clubs, and then next, you know, oh, we got him. You think, wow, you know, it's it's absolutely phenomenal, you know, how things turn out in the end, and. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. And for you, you know, I'm going to mention um, uh, the, uh, well, I was going to say rivalry. Um, with Wrexham in the 90s, you know, when uh, in the 90s where Wrexham were on top of their game and everything, you know, you, Wrexham were on par with Cardiff all the time because they were in the same division or well, you guys were in the same division and, uh, you know, you were always fighting for the Welsh Cup. I mean, I couldn't think of a brilliant, a better, you know, clash head on head, you know, who would win? Who will come out on top? So what was the competitive um, rivalry like between Wrexham and Cardiff in the 90s? It was huge. Um, you know, the, 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 the class is uh, as our derby, even though we were 140 miles away. But uh, it was fantastic times. And as you said, you know, we were, we were close to each other. Um, Swansea as well, like, you know, um, they, they were fantastic games. I still meet some of the ex-Cardiff players now through my media work, the likes of Jason Perry and Nathan Blake. And, um, you know, we always speak about those games we had against each other, you know, the, the commitment, you know, the, 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 the wanting to win, the hunger to win because it was Cardiff against Wrexham or Wrexham against Cardiff. And um, we, we have a laugh and a joke about it now, but they've got the upper hand at the moment, you know, when, when it comes to talking about it because of where Cardiff and Swansea are. And it's one thing I've said, um, you know, with this takeover going ahead, I'm not going to get carried away with thinking we can be in the Premier League in five years' time. But there's nothing stopping us getting to where Cardiff and Swansea have got. You know, uh, you know they've done it um, with, with, with some good backing. Um, they're in a good place, both teams in the Championship, both been in the Premier League in recent years. So um, there's no reason why, why we can't do that. The, the, the fan base is here. Um, you know, the, the ground itself is fantastic, uh, you know. This is the a dreaming, isn't it? It is, yeah, and, and, and it can be done, you know, uh, as proven by those two clubs. But uh, no, they, they, they were always, always good games. It was a place I liked going, the old Ninian Park and the old Vetch field. You know, again, the younger generation will never have heard of the Vetch. Uh, it, it was a fantastic place to go and play a football game. Um, we had success there, we had disappointment there, and it was the same in Ninian Park, Cardiff. You know, we, we, we did win there, but we also lost as well. Uh, but, no, it was a game. It was one of those games you'd always look forward to. And when the fixtures came out, you'd have a look when you were playing Cardiff or Swansea. Mm. Especially, do you know, with the, the Welsh Cup, of course, you know, you, you've had your um, rivalries with other Welsh clubs, you know, that uh, don't get the opportunity, you know, even though they got their own, the, the League of Wales in some cases, you know. And uh, I'll mention this in a two-part question. So the first part of the question is, when you guys were, when Wrexham were, you know, competing in the Football League and everything and the League of Wales um, was coming into fruition and, you know, they were inviting all their, the Welsh clubs that were playing in the English League system coming into, uh, into the League of Wales. For Wrexham, uh, did you or any, any of the players uh, think to yourself, we could be going to um, 
to the League of Wales? Or did you just thought, now nah, Wrexham is, they're too far advanced in the Football League. There's no way we can do that. You know, what, what was that? What was your responses and what was your thoughts on around that time when the League of Wales was coming about? Yeah, um, I could understand if, if, if Wrexham um, were able to have a, a reserve team in the Welsh Premier League. Um, you know, I think that would be good for the league. Um, Wrexham, Cardiff, Swansea, it obviously can be done. But not for one minute did I think that Wrexham should be coming out of the Football League to, to drop into the Welsh Premier League. And that's nothing against the Welsh Premier League. Mm. I've played it. Um, I've played in the Welsh Prem. I've played and managed it in the Welsh Prem. And, um, you know, I, I enjoy watching Welsh Prem games now because um, it's good, it's competitive, but um, it wasn't for me, for Wrexham Football Club, to, to drop down into it, uh, as for Cardiff and Swansea as well. You know, having been in the Football League for so long, you know, um, I, I don't think it, it would be possible for, for them. But on the other hand, if it was a reserve side the, 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 for the youngsters... Uh, to play against grown men in the Welsh Premier League, then that would have been a good opportunity. But um, you know that that never came off. No, no, fair enough. No, I, I, I mean, I always ask a lot of people. It's like with the, it's like the Merthyr Town debate. You know, should they or shouldn't they go into the the, the, the Welsh leagues? You know, and uh, see how it goes. I mean, I, I've I've expressed this so many times. You know, I think I get tired myself going. Oh, I just want to talk about it no more. And uh, but it, it is one of those things. You know, where should they, shouldn't they? And uh, I look back now, and especially because of the new investments with Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney, they've got the, they've got the, they've got a plan. And they're saying, right, within seven years, I'll say seven years, you know, because that's fairly reasonable, Premier League. That, that, that's sort of where we want to be, you know, or where Wrexham want to be. So they've got a plan. So there's no way, you know, um, the, 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 the thought or idea that Wrexham are ever going to go into the, to the Cymru Premier is, is going to happen. If, the, if that didn't happen, you know, because it was a big topic, you know, Malcolm Allen was talking about it on SRC, you know, there, there, there was... Um, talk about it you know and but it, it like I said it, I don't think it's gonna happen they got the plans now you know and it's it, it's gonna uh, they, they've got their hearts when we wrecked them we got their hearts out on the football league so I'm happy for them you know I just want them out of the conference I am I'm actually I'm getting exhausted for them it's like oh come on you know um but with you know, the, it's been a long time and it's been a long time you know 12 13 years um had anybody said to me when they dropped out of the football league that It'll be that long before they get back. I'd have laughed at them and said, no, nah, that's not possible. Wrexham can be at this level for so long. But they are, they are you know. Um, it's been, I haven't got the answer why. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I wish I had. I wish I had the, the, the formula for, to tell somebody how they can get out of it. Um, but it's been difficult. And I think the too often of changing managers hasn't helped. Uh, too many managers have come and gone. Too many managers haven't been given long enough. Um, not bringing enough youth players. So the, 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 there's quite a bit um, to suggest to me that the, the reason why they haven't um, been successful, um, but nobody wants to listen to to, to myself. I'm, these are my thoughts on, on why it's not worked. Um, I, I've been right behind every manager who, who, who has had a, had a chance. Um, and I, I wish success from Dean Keats uh, because, you know, n- nothing would please me more than to see Dean and Wrexham, you know, progressing back into that football league. And uh, I keep saying it every year and and I'll say it again now. Let's hope this is the year because Mm. personally, I don't think the season has been great up to now, um, but they're not out of it. You know, a win win against Halifax tonight puts them back into the playoff places. The league is a tight league. Um, The clubs are much of a muchness. Uh, You put two or three wins together, you're, you're, you're back in amongst it. Um, and that's what we have to accept. The, the, the football, the football isn't watching Man City or Liverpool. Uh, it's different, um, but it's a national league, and, and and that's where we're at. And uh, we have to accept that. You know, nothing but, would please. Me. Sorry, go. On. No, no, go on. No, go on. I, I cut you off. Then what was what was you going to no, say? Nothing then? would please me more than turning up to watch Wrexham and uh, seeing them perform brilliantly in every game. But, but I, for one, no, that's not going to happen. Mm. They have to grind results out. Would you consider <coughs> the Welsh Cup to be a uh, a key part? Because I would love to see. It's like um, it's like with a lot of things, right? They, I mean, they talk about 
there's a lot of pro Welsh League fans that probably don't want Cardiff or Swansea, you know, the first team Cardiff or Swansea to be in the Welsh Cup. And we can understand because, you, you know, but we know for a fact that probably nine times out of ten, Cardiff and City will probably walk the majority of the, um, the, the League of Wales sites, or, you know, the Cymru Premier sites. And that's no disrespect, but that's, I think, that would happen. But for the likes of, you know, Newport, Merthyr and, and Wrexham, you know, would you would there ever be like a consideration for them in first team football to compete in, in the Welsh Cup? Because it would give them an opportunity to go back to European football again, you know? I'd, I'd like to see it. Um, whether or not it will happen is another thing, because... I'm sure from from the clubs in the league, um, the Conistees, the Druids, the, the Barrys, I'm sure they would love to be pitched up against Wrexham or, or Cardiff or Swansea. You know, albeit it's going to be tough for them uh, to win, but on a one-off game, you never know. And um, but and, and it was always special in the Welsh Cup. You know, um, you know I, I had a bit of, I had success and defeat in finals, um, but I always enjoyed the Welsh Cup. You know, when, when we played. Uh, in some of the league, uh, Welsh Premier League clubs now, um, we used to go to the likes of Carmarthen to try and get through to the to the next round, and 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 it was always always enjoyable. But um, like I say, whether or not that that comes back, I, I I can't actually see it at the moment. Moving on to you know uh, when you when you went to Stockport, but then you came back to Wrexham, you know, because it, it was going to ha- probably going to happen one way to go <laughs> to go home. But when you went to, uh, when, when you finally hung up your, your boots at Wrexham, not retirement, but just finished your days at Wrexham and went to the, the Welsh Premier League at Carnarvon, how did that uh, transfer happen for you to go from Wrexham to Carnarvon? Well, I actually, um, my career was brought to an end at Wrexham um, a lot sooner than what I had hoped because I broke my leg um, 2002 in, in Scunthorpe, first game of the season, Six minutes into a new season, my, my leg was shattered. I broke my tib and fib. And um, I was 32 years of age. Um, and that basically brought my career to an end because um, I did retire from from the Football League and Wrexham through injury because I'd been out for 15 months. It was a tough old road to get back. Um, I was out of contract at 33, 34. Uh, been out the game for so long. It was always going to be difficult for me to get a football club. And I was, in fact, told by a, by a consultant that I would struggle to play football again. Um, but being determined as I am, you know, I wanted to give it a good go to get back to some kind of football. Um, so finished in Wrexham, sadly finished through retirement. Um, and then that opportunity to, to work hard, to try and get... Um, to try and get back to be able to play maybe part time, which suited me, um, you know, after the leg break, uh, full time football, I couldn't have, I couldn't have coped with it, or the leg couldn't have coped with it. But I was able to do part time, you know, a couple of nights a week, and the game on the Saturday, um, recover till the next week, and and, and that worked for me. Um, so I did eventually uh, sign for Carnarvon um, as as a player, uh, which led to me becoming manager there. And, um, you know, it was just, I think it was about five or six years later um, that I eventually hung up my boots at, at, at the old age of 40 years, 40 years of age. And, um, you know, ended my career at, at, at Rose Sailwood. Um, uh, I mentioned the, the Welsh National League back in the late 80s, playing for Wrexham against these sides, you know, against the likes of Rose and Penicai. And um, that's where I ended up playing, um, you know, for a team in the Cabrera Lions, and that was Rose Sailwood. And when you uh, finished your career with, uh, it was Kevin Druids, you know, and uh, did you, um, what was, because you were player manager, was you like a player manager at Carnarvon and, and Kevin Druids, you know, because uh, you, I bet you uh, enjoyed, you know, going, right, get off, I want to come on now, you know. <laughs> it, it, it was probably quite the opposite, uh, being a player manager, um, such a difficult role, um, you know, and I, I realise now how, how tough that role was. Um, because you 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 are still playing because you feel you can still offer something, and then you're trying to sort things out on the pitch when everything's not going well, and and you're 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 the weak link in a way because your mind's on everybody else when you're not concentrating on your own game. So I only realised after I finished playing how difficult of a role that is, and that's why I don't think you see too many player managers these days. You know they they they, they concentrate on the management side of it. 
um, which which you know you can fully commit yourself to 100%. Um, I was lucky in Kevin Druids, I had Lee Jones alongside me. We had like a joint manager's roles. Um, so even though when I was playing, Lee was tended to be on the sideline, you still feel being in that role that you have to um, take a bit more responsibility. So um, it, it, it was good. It was good at that time. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, and I think I would have still been involved in football uh, management, coaching in some capacity, had I not been given the opportunity to go into the media side of it. And it's something I've thoroughly enjoyed for the last 10 years, uh, working for the BBC and BBC Radio Cymru, um, a little bit of work for Scorio. So, um, uh, you know, I've just sort of gone from one to the other uh, without even having time to think if I miss a plane or not. And final question is for you that I've always asked a lot of people uh, towards the end of the podcast. And I want to say as well, a big thank you, Wayne, to, to come on and just talk about your career, really. It's really I really do appreciate it. Um, so the final question for you is, how do you look back on your career? I look back um, thinking I was quite fortunate uh, to have had the career I had. Um, uh, you know, to have played with some of the people I played with and against, um, you know, over 250 uh, league games for Wrexham Football Club. Um, some fantastic memories. Um, you know, as I said, mentioned that I'm 50 years of age now. Those were the best years of my life. Um, the, you know, the, the greatest job you can ever have, in my opinion, because going into work every day, enjoying what you're doing, um, trying to do it with a smile on your face. So um, I look back and think how, how lucky I was. Um, obviously, I had to work hard at it. You know, nobody ever gave 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 me um, anything. You know, it was sheer hard work that got me through um, those 15, 20 years uh, being a professional footballer. Um, you know, working hard from from year to year, uh, and and you know. It's sad in the way it came to an end because I, I do feel I could have played a little bit longer for Wrexham and who knows where that may have taken us. It may take me down a different path. But um, I look back and only look back with, with some great memories and, 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 as I said, those were the best years of my life. Wayne, thank you so much for coming on the Track of Choice podcast to talk about career and I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. No worries. So, guys, that was Wayne Phillips on the Dragon's Voice podcast. And if you want more content, make sure you just uh, click like, share, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click on the bell to get more updates and more content. It's more to come, so don't you worry about that. But for the time being, thank you so much for tuning in to the Dragon's Voice podcast. I've been your host, Trudy Reesteens, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.